So a few weeks ago, I did a video on what I call technology's Swiss army knife, which was the NAS. And this week I wanted to do another video about uh, another jack of all trades called the Raspberry Pi. This guy was first released in 2012 and the idea of it was to have a very affordable, easy way to learn programming and to learn computer science. It's because the concern is that a lot of the kids that were growing up because of smartphones and whatnot didn't really have a good connection to how technology works. So they came up with this and it absolutely took off. At the time this thing was released, it only cost $35. And it had very limited resources because it had a very kind of a niche idea with respect to programming, so it didn't need a lot of horsepower. It had ethernet, one, well rather I should say, one of the versions had Ethernet, the other one did not. And one had, I think, two USB ports, and the other one had three or four. And it had a seven megahertz ARM processor, and it had 512 megabytes of RAM. So it was very entry level, and this was 2012. But for $35, that was crazy good. Since then, there have been numerous successors that are Raspberry Pi 2, the Raspberry Pi 3, 4, as well as even smaller versions like the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Raspberry Pi Zero. There's even been Raspberry Pi compute modules that are great if you're doing any type of clustering that is running multiple compute modes together. There's even a Raspberry Pi 4 that can house the Raspberry Pi board in a keyboard case. That brings us to the Raspberry Pi 5. And I bought this off Amazon for about 110 bucks. And it came with this, came with this power supply here, five volt power supply. And here is the USB power delivery that we'll look at in a second. And these come in little kits. Uh, this one is a, a can of kit. And uh, this one, I chose to not get it with an SD card, which is the main way that you put an operating system on here. Um, but I, you can certainly get the, the kits with an SD card. And I think it's like an extra 10 bucks to get a 32 gigabyte SD card, which is ridiculously cheap. And again, I'll leave those links in the description. Looking closer at the Raspberry Pi 5, it comes with a 64-bit Broadcom BCM2712 quad-core. 2.4 gigahertz CPU, up to eight gigabytes of RAM, Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.0, and we have over here our gigabit LAN. We also have two USB 3.0 ports and two USB 2.0 ports. And then we have the scourge of the Raspberry Pi, which are these micro HDMI's that I just I just don't like. They're just too hard to work with. They're just, you know, I've, I've actually broken HDMI micro ports before. Then we also have our USB-C for our five volt power delivery. Uh, in addition, there are two, what are called MIPI ports for cameras right here. And actually uh, a few firsts for this Raspberry Pi. First off, we have a power button and it's a little hard to see here, but it's actually this guy right here. Uh, looks like a little little white 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 head, white pin head, <laughs> and turning it off with a little bit of a push, and the Pi will come on. And then when you push it again, it'll ask you if you want to reboot or if you want to shut down that type of thing. Um, historically, what you would have to do is either buy a power cord that had an on and off switch, or you would have to shut down the machine uh, within the OS, which you can still do. More impressively is the addition of a dedicated PCIe interface. Uh, this is for if you want to attach uh, an NVMe drive for your storage. Usually what you would have to do is they would have to be communicating via your USB 3.0 ports. It's a lot easier and it's a lot more efficient and I think it's a, it's a much better addition. Last but not least, we have the general purpose input output or AKA GPIO pins. And that is these guys right here. There's about 40 of them. And these are used for communicating with all manner of electronic components acting as a physical interface between the Raspberry Pi and the outside world, which we will be demoing a little bit later. You can use it for all types of things like receiving data from sensors to measuring humidity and even turning on other devices. Uh, there are tons of videos out there that go into a lot more detail on the different types of projects you can go with, uh, do with the GPIO pins. Uh, and we'll take a look at some of those a little later. 
On the underside, you have the default way of putting an operating system on the Raspberry Pi, which is an SD card reader. And we're gonna be using that uh, to put our operating system on there, which is gonna be the Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, to make things a little easier for my fat and clumsy fingers, we're going to flash it to this micro SD card with this adapter. And uh, there's a little, kind of hard to see, a little hole there that you can put the SD card in like that. And then what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use this little adapter here. And I'm gonna put this in like so. And it's a USB key. So I just plug this in, sorry. This camera is inverted, so it's hard for me to get oriented. This USB key uh, plugs into the computer and then you flash it to this uh, micro SD card. I'm only so cautious because I've actually broken a couple of these very small SD cards. Uh, they're very delicate and you gotta be careful. And yeah, this one is a 256, uh, only because I ran out of 32 gigabyte ones because I actually broke one. So that's what we're gonna be using for today's video okay so here we are at the raspberry pi os imager site and if you're not sure where to get this as i mentioned i'm going to put a link in the description i uh, go to raspberrypi.com forward slash software if you come to the home page you just go to the top under software and you'll come right to where the imager can be downloaded so I am on a Mac, so I'm going to click on Download for Mac, and here it is here, so I'm going to drag this over. So now I'm going to plug in my SD card into my USB adapter, and we plug that into my Mac. And this is the Pi integer interface, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Choose Device, and that means what Raspberry Pi model do you have, and I'm going to say Raspberry Pi 5 operating system. I'm going to choose Pi OS 64-bit. It's the latest and greatest. Choose storage. I have a 256 gigabyte one in here. Click on next. And then of course you want to be careful that the media that you put in here is not something that you want to save because it's going to delete everything. Let that write and we will be right back. Okay, the SD card has been written with the Raspberry Pi OS. So we're gonna take this out and put it into the SD card reader of the Raspberry Pi. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm going to connect my monitor and my USB and keyboard and all my other peripherals. And now we're gonna take this SD card, pop it out of here, take this out, get these out of the way. And the way you put this in is that the face of it, uh, the label of the SD card always goes on top so you just kind of line it up and then just push it right in it, it only goes in one way uh, don't force it whatever you do and just put very light pressure on it, it it's uh, it's not going to give you much trouble for my mouse and keyboard combo I'm going to use this Logitech uh, 400 plus and this is a you know as you can see keyboard and a mouse pad here and so we're going to plug that into one of these ports down here like that Okay, because we are dealing with micro HDMI, about this little adapter, and you have a full size HDMI on one end, and then you have a micro HDMI on the other end. And I'll leave a link to these all in the description. You just have to make sure that this, uh, everything's lined up here. It goes in just like that. And then the other end, I'm gonna plug into my monitor, and we will go from there. Okay, so now that we're logged into the Pi, First thing I'd like to do is go over to the upper right hand corner to make sure that we are logged into Wi-Fi, which we are. And we can see that our Bluetooth is on, our sound is on, so everything is working uh, as expected. And I'm actually using a portable monitor here uh, to film this. There's not an easy way that I had access to right away to do a screen recording. So we're just gonna use this for now. And so we're gonna go over to the upper left hand corner to where we see the Pi logo. Uh, this is similar to the Windows start menu, if you will. And here we have the default Python that is installed, which is Athani. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but you can get other 
um, Python editors on here, which I'll show in a second. And then we have the internet and the Chromium web browser is here as well as Firefox. They are installed by default. And uh, we have a VLC media player. And then if we go down to preferences, I always like to go down to where it says recommended software. And then once we're down there, we can take a peek at all of our different options. And we have a, an option up here that says all programs. And if we go down to, as an example, games, this is actually another really cool way to learn Python with different arcade games. And that's our internet, our office. They, we can put on LibreOffice, which I also did a video on a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's our complete word processor, um, spreadsheet, presentation program. And if we go into other, this is where our Python, a lot of our Python stuff is that we can put on. Um, U is a very good, what they call integrated development environment or IDE. And that's a good way if you wanted to learn it. And then there's also what's called Scratch. Scratch is very neat. It's for beginners, um, as most of these are. And it gives a, it kind of gives you little pictures of cartoon characters to help you learn programming and the uh, basics and logic of computer programming. And then there's actually also a way you can put on Visual Studio Code, which is uh, very interesting. I'll have to check that out myself. So next we're going to be taking a look at how to use the camera on the Raspberry Pi 5 as well as how to use the GPIO pins slash breadboard to light up a LED. For our next little project we're going to show you how we can utilize these uh, GPIO pins here and we're going to be using this breadboard uh, which I bought I don't know how long ago a couple years ago and what we're going to do is we're going to be using these GPIO pins to turn on this LED light. So here is the, the GPIO pins that we're gonna use. And some of them are for the ground and some of them are gonna be used to send signals to the Pi board or the breadboard. I always say Pi board, I don't know why. So that's what we're gonna be messing with. So essentially, you know, and this is not something you guys don't wanna do when the Pi is turned on. You can see that I have it unplugged from the uh, USB power. I still have the HDMI cord in there, but I have it unplugged from USB power uh, don't do this when the Pi is on or, or if you uh, have it plugged in, it's just not a good idea. So we have this little this LED plugged in and you can see that we have the longer end or the positive right here. And that is going to be plugged into the positive portion of the breadboard. And then we have the negative with a shorter end over here. And that's the cathode. And then we have this jumper. And that is going to go over to a GPIO pin on the board that I'll show in just a second. And then we have our resistor down here. And the resistor one end is plugged into the cathode portion of the breadboard. And the other end is, you can see it's, it's parallel to the other end of the... So we're going to be using this, this little cheat sheet here that came with our Pi. Um, and then we're gonna be using this 16 pin for the GPIO. So this is gonna give us the ground and then this is gonna send our signal. So on the Pi, this is sort of how the orientation is. Uh, that means we're gonna be taking the ground and plugging it in here. And then we have our actual GPIO connection and that's gonna go into number 16. And there we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna power this thing on and run a quick, a quick script and make sure that we work. Okay, so here we are back in our Raspberry Pi OS, and we're gonna test this out. I actually got this uh, Python code from Tom's hardware, but essentially what we have here is we have the initialization of the Pi, where the GPI is gonna go, and there we have our, our for statement or our while statement, as, uh, as they say. So essentially, it's gonna turn the LED on and then off for one second. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So we're gonna click on run. And there we have it. We have our LED light blinking on and off. We can adjust the variables on the time. We can make this blink faster, slower, whatever you wanna do. So that is how we can utilize the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, just another project you can try out. There are tons of them online if you wanna look them up. So next we're gonna be taking a look at how to use the camera on the Raspberry Pi 5.
For our camera, we're going to be using this 1080p camera, uh, version 2.0. 2-8 I believe is the model number and I bought this in 2021 for like 12 bucks and what I didn't realize when I was preparing for this video is that this interface on the bottom which I was talking about before I was mentioning before that these two little ports down here are for the camera uh, for an add-on or an accessory a camera that type of thing but this is uh, much too big just doesn't it won't fit so we are going to have to use a different Raspberry Pi for that and luckily I happen to have a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, 4B to be exact that I will be using and if we put them kind of side by side here is the port in question you can see it's much bigger on the Raspberry Pi 4 than the 5 so pull it up there's little brackets on here just pull it up very gingerly and you always put the blue end this way make it nice and snug we're going to try a couple of commands here so i'm just going to turn this a little bit more just so i'm not stretching that cord too much and try and keep it in view here we are at our terminal so we're going to try rpi cam dash oops, hello and there I am there I am on the camera so it just takes a quick snapshot of uh, yours truly and we're gonna try one more here which is this is kind of neat we're gonna do RPI cam dash JPEG and we're going to output Mackie Tech one JPEG and let it take its picture the image was received so let's go ahead and see where that picture landed and we have Mackie Tech here and there I am boy that's a horrible photo so that is example two of two of the different things you can do with a Raspberry Pi that I wanted to show you today so that is going to wrap it up today over here at Mackie Tech and we uh, look so that is going to wrap it up today for Mackie Tech uh, we went over the Raspberry Pi 5 we went through some programs we looked at the OS we played some goofy stuff with the camera and with the breadboard and I hope everything made sense I will be posting all of the links of the hardware and the scripts I used in the discussion notes if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Mackie Tech if you haven't done so already we will definitely be doing more follow-up videos on the Raspberry Raspberry Pi because I've got like three or four different Raspberry Pi 4 lying around and I want to do a, a video on Kubernetes so uh, let me know in the comments below what type of projects you guys have tried if you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi if you've uh, done any type of breadboard or uh, other types of stuff with environmental testing or anything of the such uh, let us know in the comments and uh, thanks again for watching and we will see you again very soon